to 25 year old Grant who has ambitions of retiring at thir- well, we may maybe not say 30 because an 82 percent savings rate isn't uh, isn't realistic for a lot of people. We'll say who wants to retire early, who wants to achieve financial freedom and and reach those financial goals in a very short space of time. What's the one piece of advice you could give to that person? It's a great question. I think the number one thing is figure out what trade-offs you're willing to make because everything that has to do with money, there's a trade-off. And for me, I made too many trade-offs. And so I lost friendships. I ended up gaining over 50 pounds. You know, there's a lot of things that I did that I, if I would thought about them and understood what those trade-offs would be for, you know, working 70, 80 hour weeks, not taking care of my health, not, you know, nurturing my friendships, not nurturing my relationships, then, then I, then I wouldn't have made them. Uh, I could have, I could have, you know, slowed down by about 20% and still, you know, retired in 10 years or less. And so I think a lot of people, or at least me, I have kind of an all or nothing mindset, you know, it's kind of black or white, where it's like, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to be all in, or I'm not going to do it. And I think there's a lot of people that especially look at my story, and they're like, gosh, I can't do that. And the thing is, like, looking back on it, you know, I, I recently reread part of my book, and I don't even recognize that person anymore than I'm writing about because I've changed, you know, so much. And I'm like, this guy seems so intense. You know, like, I can't <laughs> even imagine, like, like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I was so intense. Like, I don't even, like, I don't even recognize you know, that, <laughs> you know, anymore because I'm, I'm so different now. Um, and so that's the thing too, is you, you need to go at your own pace. You need, you know, the, the, it's, it's a math game, you know, it's, it's very simple math. And the thing is, just set some kind of seemingly unrealistic goal and then start, you know, start working towards it. And you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know. The the number one thing is just get going and just keep at it and just be mindful about the trade-offs that you're making. You know, I think especially, you know, in in the West, you know, we, we, we try to rationalize everything. We try to you know, dominate. And this is the thing, a lot of, a lot of people that are attracted to financial independence, you know, they're kind of rational thinkers, they're engineers, they're systems thinkers. They're like, oh, if I just do A, B, and C, then I'll get, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, and that's true. But the reality is you have to be listening to your intuition as you're doing these things. Because what happened once, once my story got out, once the fire movement started growing, what happened is People were like, whoa, that's so extreme. So some people got on board and they saved 80% of their income. And then they ended up burning out after a year and a half, right? They just, you know, they just, they were unhappy. They were, they weren't spending money in the right ways. And that's one of the reasons I tried to write my book and just be like, hey, if this thing gives you joy, then spend money on it. If it doesn't, then just don't. And I think there's a lot of people that just get so hardcore and they just burn out. You know, it's like someone just starting to work out. And then they're like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to run an ultra marathon. And it's like, yo, 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 you got to like, you know, increase your mobility. You got to like start running some, you start lightly jogging. You've got to start. And I think a lot of people go way too fast, way too quickly when you've got to find the pace that works for you. You got to start trying it out. You got to make some mistakes and then you got to adapt because ultimately this is, this is a choose your own adventure path. And the thing is, there's probably 800 different tips in the book, right? And you can't do all of them, nor should you do all of them. Just do a few of them, and the sum will be so much greater than the parts. I mean, just a few. I mean, just increasing your savings rate from 5% to 15%, you're going to have a lot more money than you thought you would have. You know, create a side hustle or create a side business and make a thousand or two thousand extra dollars a month, and then just invest that. The rate of compounding is going to increase exponentially. And then what happens is you just do a few of these things and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, driving a more affordable car and renting out my extra room and investing that money and having a side business where I make, you know, 500 to $1,000 a month and investing, you know, 20% instead of 10%. Wow. You put all of these four or five pieces together and you wake up in two years 
and you have you know $150,000 in the bank and you never thought that that would be possible and you've been inspired and you've accomplished way more than you thought you would accomplish. And then you can revisit how you feel because that's important. You got to check in with yourself. Am I still, do I still want a roommate? Do I still want to have this side business? Do I still want to work nights and weekends on my side business? Do I still, in some cases you're like, absolutely, I want to double down. In other cases, you're like, no, like this is good enough for now or no, I'm not willing to make that trade off. So life is, is long. Life is, you know, a series of changes and evolutions and energy shifts. And the more that you pay attention to that, it's so much easier to manage your relationship with money because relationships, uh, you know, relationship with money, just like any other relationship, you know, is going to change. And so you got to pay attention to that and be honest with yourself. And, and, and I guarantee anyone listening to this, if you spend more time with your money, if you spend more time thinking about it, if you spend more time thinking about how it makes you feel and the role that it plays in your life and the trade-offs that you're making, I can absolutely guarantee you that you'll start seeing money differently and its role in your life. And you'll end up wanting to acquire more freedom and you'll see exactly how to do that. And that's the most exciting thing you know, for me is when people think this isn't possible. And then they start having a few wins and they're like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, they feel empowered and inspired and, and realize that they can accomplish so much more than they thought that they could just with a few simple changes that are pretty easy to make and compound when added together so much more than just, you know, one decision by itself.